Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Today we're working on Module 5, Lesson 13, and today we're going to be reasoning using our benchmark fractions to compare two fractions on a number line. So, there are a whole bunch of problems in the homework tonight in, when you include all the different little subparts of problems 1 through 5. So I'm going to kind of work through a few of them scattered throughout the homework in hopes that that helps you to, uh, to get your homework done tonight and helps you to understand uh, the problems that we're looking at. So let's take a look at some, of the some parts of the first two problems. Let's take a look at problem number 1 and we'll do a couple of those parts together. I'll leave one of those parts for you and then maybe we'll look at a little bit of number 2 since it refers to number 1. So let's take a look at the directions for part number 1. Place the following fractions on the number line given. Okay, well let's take a look at the first one. 3 halves, so that's 3 halves. So 3 halves is an irregular fraction, so we could, uh, we could go ahead and do the mixed number version. Um, the mixed number version, let's see, 3 halves, 2 of those halves would make a whole, and then we'd still have one more half, so that would be 1 and 1 half. So 1 and 1 half. Oh, okay, well, that are, we've already got, so I'm actually just going to do a little draw here, and then I'll say that this is 3 halves right there. Excellent. Now let's take a look at another one of our fractions. Let's take a look at 1b. 9 fifths. Well, let's see. 9 fifths. Let's express that as a mixed number. Let's see. 5 of those fifths would make a whole. And then we would still have, let's see, 4, right? 9 minus 5 would be 4 fifths left. So 1 and 4 fifths. Okay. So 1 and 4 fifths. Well, I notice that I have 4 out of 5 marks. In fact, if I sort of in my head divide up the number line from 1 to 2 into fifths, I'd say, well... One, two, three, four, five fifths, right? Something like that. So I think one and four fifths would be somewhere over here. Let me see if I can. I'll go ahead and put nine fifths there and see if my reasoning is right. The other way I can look at four fifths is I can say, well, I don't know exactly where it is, but it's definitely more than one half, right? Four fifths is definitely more than one half. So I know that it's over here. It's closer to five fifths than it is um, to anything else. So I'm going to put it, I think over here is pretty good. So I'm going to leave you to go ahead and do part C on your own. And let's look at number two. Use the number line in problem one to compare the fractions by writing greater than, less than, or equal to on the lines. Let's look at what we've got. The first one, we're asked to compare one and one-sixth with one and four-twelfths. Okay, well, one thing I notice about one and four-twelfths is that it looks like we could divide the numerator and denominator by 4 to make this fraction a little simpler. So let's see if we could do that. 1 and 4 twelfths, the 4 twelfths part, let's see, I could divide the top and the numerator and denominator of 4 twelfths by, let's see, uh, I could divide it by 2, but I think I can divide it by 4. Let's see if that works. Let's see, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So this is the same as 1 and 1 third. Awesome. Now let's see if this makes it easier for us to compare. So we're comparing 1 and 1 sixth with 1 and 1 third. Oh, well that makes it easier, right? Because we know 1 sixth is a smaller part of a whole than 1 third. So we know that 1, one and 1 sixth is going to be somewhere over here, but 1 and 1 third we go one, two, three thirds. So one third is going to be somewhere over here. So I, I might go ahead and label that. I'll say this is about one and one third. And over here is one and one sixth. So we know that one and one third is greater than one and one sixth. And we should be able to figure that out either by simplifying this fraction or if we didn't want to simplify the fraction, we could go ahead and, and tick out twelfths, right, between one and two, right? So there would be six of them, three of them. We could tick out all the twelfths all the way along here and then pick four of them. And that's, we'd end up right here as well, right, about one and one-third or one and four-twelfths since those are equivalent fractions. Excellent. I'm going to leave 2b for you as well as number three and four. Let's move on to one more problem, and I'll do a couple parts of that. Let's take a look at pro uh, problem number five. Compare the fractions given below by writing greater than or less than on the lines. Give a brief explanation for each answer referring to benchmarks. Okay, let's see. Two fifths. We're going to compare two fifths and six eighths. Hmm, okay, well, I might be able to simplify six eighths, but let's say that I didn't remember that. Let's just look at the benchmarks. Let's see, our benchmark numbers are, let's see, zero. Well, they're both bigger than zero, obviously. 
one, let's see, but six eighths is smaller than one, right? If we had an imaginary t uh, number line here, if we had a number line, oops, sorry, my, uh, wow, my, uh, my arrowhead was just dreadful there. If we had a number line here of zero and one, both of these fractions are going to be bigger than the zero and less than the one. So that doesn't really help us. What's our other benchmark number? Our other benchmark fraction would be one half, right? Let's take a look at these two numbers with regard to one half, how they relate to that. Two fifths. Well, let's see. Fifths would be one, two, three, four, five. Two would be somewhere over here, right? Two fifths. How about six eighths? If we divided this up into eight pieces, let's see, that would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six eighths would be somewhere over here, right? That would be six eighths. So I think we know that their relationship to one half tells us which is bigger, that two fifths is a little less than one half, and six eighths is bigger than one half. So I think that gives us enough information to say that six eighths is bigger than two halves, is greater than two, I'm sorry, than two fifths, or two fifths is less than six eighths, same thing. Let's take a look at a slightly more difficult problem down here. Here we're asked to compare eight ninths and three halves. Again, let's think about this with relation to our benchmark fractions, right? We have zero, we have, let's see, one, and now we remember we have one half. Let's see, eight ninths, eight ninths. Okay, so it's just a ninth away from one, and it's a little less than one, right? So I think eight ninths would be somewhere over right about here, right? Eight ninths, somewhere like that. How about three halves? Three halves. Well, three halves looks like it'd be greater than one, right? We could express three halves as one and one half. And that means that we would be somewhere out like here, right? Three halves. And in relation to our benchmark, our benchmark uh, number of one, it's definitely bigger than that. Three halves. Anytime the numerator is bigger than the denominator, we know it's going to be somewhere greater than one. So three halves is out here somewhere out on this part of the number line. And eight ninths we know is a little bit smaller than one, so it's going to be here on the number line. So again, I think we have enough information. I think we can make our call that three halves is greater than eight ninths, or eight ninths is less than three halves. So there are a lot of other problems in number five, a lot of other parts that still leaves you B, C, D, E, G, H, I, and J as possible places where you might go. So I'll leave those to you depending on what your teacher assigned, and I'll join you again next time on Mr. Kung Has Problems.